Hello everybody, this is a short course on the Gauss Markov theorem and regression. So we start with some uh, basics on linear algebra. So this is this one. Okay, so now let's start. So you have a x which is a n times p matrix. So you define the image of x as the, the linear combination that you can get from the uh, column vector of x. The kernel of x is the set of the subspace of the y such that when you apply y on x it gives you zero. So since x is n times p, x transpose is p times n and so the kernel of x transpose is actually in Rn. So both m of x and the kernel of x transpose are subspaces of Rn. And actually these two sub subspaces are orthogonal. So you have this uh, decomposition of Rn, which is here. Rn is the orthogonal sum between m of x and m of x orthogonal. And actually m of x orthogonal is the kernel of x uh, transpose. So otherwise stated, you have a um, very simple uh, writing of the orthogonal projection on y so if and only if x is the orthogonal projection of of y if and only if x belongs to m of x and the difference between y and m of x should belong to the kernel of x transpose actually if you want to know why this is true so the only thing to to check is that uh, the kernel of x transpose is equal to m of x orthogonal sorry m of x orthogonal like this so if you want to, to check this then you can see that z belongs to this if and only if z is orthogonal to any column vector of, of, of uh, x so xi and xi transpose actually is actually is the row vectors of the matrix x transpose so this will give you the first property then we are going to go back to go to some other properties second one is the fact that uh, if you write p m of x as a matrix of, of the orthogonal projection on m of x so to simplify we will just only write like this, like this one, p of x, then you will get first equality px square is px, so it tells you that it is just the matrix of a projection, and it is also an orthogonal projection, so px is px transpose, and the fact that px is equal to px square tells you that px is reduced to the identity on m of x if you restrict your attention on m of x so this property is very simple it tells you that if you have m of x is equal to m of w where x is n times p and w is n times k where possibly x is different from k then if you need if you want to define the orthogonal projection on m of x, it only depends on m of x. So if m of x is equal to m of y, the orthogonal projection are the same. So you have px is equal to pw, even though k is different from p. And the last property is definition of pseudo inverse. So of course, x is not a square matrix. So there is no inverse in general, but there is a pseudo inverse and the pseudo inverse should satisfy this identity. X, X, G, X is equal to X. And in other words, if you restrict your attention on M of X, then X, X, G is the identity on M of X. So applied to the lambda, it gives you lambda. Okay. So let's start with the fundamental result on ordinary least square equation estimator. So you have uh, px of y should belong on the space where it projects. So it can be it should be written like x b hat. 
where b hat belongs to rp so if you have an expression like this if you have the projection of y which can be written as xb hat and xb hat satisfies also this property so these two are completely obvious and this is also equivalent to the fact that b hat satisfies what is called the normal equation which is x transpose x b hat is equal to x transpose y and the last property of the fundamental result is an expression of the projection matrix as x x transpose x g so the pseudo inverse of x transpose x multiplied by x transpose and this holds for any choice of the pseudo inverse x transpose xg so we're going to to check this one so we will set m as this matrix and the objective is to show that m is equal to px so to check this we will take y here and show that m of y is actually the projection of y on m of x so we have remember that we have an expression of the orthogonal projection so it should first belong to m of x and the difference between y and x should belong to care of x transpose this is the two things that we're going to check with m of y so m of y if you write it if you replace m by its expression then m of y can be written as x applied to some vector here so it belongs to m of x. Seventh thing is to show that y minus m of y should belong to the kernel of x transpose. So let's prove that. Oops. So you will look at this quantity. This one, x transpose identity minus m. And if you apply to x, you replace by the definition of m and then you will get uh, so the definition of m is here you will get this thing which is exactly uh, equal to zero by definition of the pseudo inverse so finally if you apply x to this matrix here you, you get zero so on m of x you, you have this thing which is equal to zero and if you now if you look at z belongs to the kernel of x transpose then this quantity applied to z if you replace you there are some calculations but you can see two terms which are x transpose z appears on the right uh, on the right this is equal to zero because that belongs to care of x transpose so finally x transpose identity minus m is zero on these two subspaces and these two subspaces are complement to each other so when you take the sum it's equal to rn so finally this is x transpose x transpose identity minus m is equal to zero so it means that uh, it means that what uh, it means that uh, identity minus m y x transpose identities minus m y is equal to zero equal to zero for all uh, y so that uh, identity minus my belongs to the kernel of x transpose okay so let's finish with the ghost markov theorem so you are in a model where you have this uh, expression of y y is xb plus a random vector this is all you know about this random vector is that it is zero mean and the covariance matrix is sigma square i n you don't assume anything on the low of uh, e it can be gaussian it can be different from gaussian and uh, you will make an assumption that uh, you have a lambda 
such that lambda transpose b uh, is estimable so by a linear unbiased estimator so 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 you have a, a transpose y which is such that the expectation of a transpose y is lambda transpose b so when you write this um, identity and if you add that this should all for all b then you would get an assumption which is summed up in this identity lambda transpose is a transpose x and of course it means also that lambda is x transpose a by taking the uh, transpose of all that now let's go to the gauss markov theorem the gauss markov theorem is very important this one so if you take an unbiased estimator of this then the variance of this unbiased estimator is bounded from below by this one so it means that lambda transpose p hat has the minimal variance so it is the best linear unbiased estimator and since it is the blue the best linear unbiased estimator i will choose the blue color for this so it is the blue best linear unbiased estimator and actually, when you have an, uh, an estimator which gives you equality here, then necessarily uh, A transpose Y is equal to lambda transpose P hat. So the blue is not only good, it is unique. Unique. Okay. Let's go to the proof. So recall that we are under the assumption of lambda transpose a transpose is equal to a transpose x so you have this property since a transpose y is an unbiased estimator of this you have this property so this will imply the expression of lambda transpose p hat you will you will replace by lambda transpose here and then it gives you this and x p hat is p x of y by definition of p hat so now you replace by the you take this and you put it in the expectation you will get this and if you remark that p x of x is equal to x this is true because p x is a projection on m of x so p x is the identity on m of x so this gives you this and you replace by the expression once again of lambda so this is this expression here uh, which is important so i will underline it here in yellow so you get that lambda transpose b hat is unbiased so the blue is a linear unbiased estimator now if you use again uh, this star equation lambda transpose b hat so it can be written like this and there is a, a trick here and the trick is to look at this and to say that this is pxa transpose so finally you have a scalar product between y and this vector which is non-random so when you look at the variance of this you will get p x a transpose covariance of y p x a and the covariance of y is sigma square identity as seen here so you will get finally sigma square identity and pxa transpose pxa here gives you the norm of pxa square so the norm of pxa square is less than the norm of a this is due to Pythagore you have a here you have a minus pxa and you have pxa So the norm here is smaller than this norm and 
you have only equality if PXA is equal to A. So the, these two norms are equal if and only if this is just zero. So it will give you PXA equal to A. And in that case, lambda hat, lambda transpose p hat, it is like this. This expression, this is this was done here, and uh, p x a is equal to a. It gives you finally a transpose y. So a transpose y is actually the the blue, okay, in this uh, situation. And we finished with just the variance. What we have seen is that the variance of lambda transpose p hat can be written like this. This is this uh, expression here. And uh, if you replace, you have the P transpose PX, and you recall that PX, that P transpose PX is actually, PX is PX transpose, it's also PX square. So finally, you get only px here and you replace by the definition of px there and then once again the trick is to remark that this one and this one are just lambda and lambda transpose so finally the expression of the variance is very simple it's just this term and the side effect is that this quantity does not depend on the choice of the pseudo inverse but as soon as you have the condition that lambda belongs to x transpose so this is it we have seen the gauss markov inequality the gauss markov theorem i hope that you enjoyed this video and see you later guys